Hey guys, so, so many people have been asking me, how do you stay warm? How do you live in your Honda CRV camper uh, during winter, you know, when it's cold with sub-zero temperatures? So this video is dedicated to that. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna get into what I do inside the vehicle differently, and then I'll show you my heat source. All right, so let's have a look. Inside the vehicle, first things first, you'll see that I've upgraded my sleeping bag from my usual green one. That green one I use is a military surplus uh, sleeping bag. It is a very warm sleeping bag, um, but this tends to be even warmer. This is a really lightweight uh, backpacking quilt, and I bought this from a company called Z-Pax. It is their five degree quilt, so this thing is very, very warm. That's five degrees Fahrenheit. So. This goes well below zero and keeps me toasty and snuggly even when the inside of the vehicle is cold. So you can tell already that it, there's really no unveiling of some great mystery here. If you want to be warm in a vehicle in winter, get yourself a good sleeping bag or a bunch of warm blankets. Whatever you do, just make sure your bed is warm. That being said, make sure your mattress is also really warm. I use four inch foam. I'll show you that right now, actually. So it's just a piece of four inch high density foam. Okay, that's what I use. It's very, very warm. Uh, but I also, underneath it, you can see right here, I have this knit blanket. Now this is like a wool blend. And what I use this for isn't so much warmth, but this does it uh, play a crucial role when you're living in your vehicle, sleeping in your vehicle in cold temperatures, because you're gonna get a lot of condensation inside your vehicle because your body is producing a lot of heat and it's all trapped in there, right? And so you'll notice condensation on the inside of your windows, like up here. You'll notice it maybe even on your window coverings. Of course, when you take your window coverings off, you'll notice it on the glass itself. All that condensation is not good for your mattress. It'll get under there just because it seals so well the foam against the wood. Uh, it'll get under there and your mattress can get moldy if you don't take precautions. So that's exactly why I have this blanket right here. Now, like I said, this is a wool blend, uh, just a knit blanket. I like this waffle design and this is just a really old blanket, but that allows air to get in there between the wood and the foam. Uh, I'm not the first one to do this. You'll notice it on other videos, I'm sure, if you have a look. But just so you know, I want to let you know why people do that, is it is very important to keep mold from forming on the underside of your foam mattress. All right, so that kind of covers the bed. Now, let's take a look elsewhere. What's this? What is this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, guys, this is just a beanie, but it's no mistake, this is what I'm after. Now, your head loses a lot of heat, right? In all cold conditions, it's still happening while you're sleeping. So always, always in cold weather, in your car or elsewhere, if you're in a tent or whatever, wear a beanie, a nice warm one, while you're sleeping. It'll keep you heck a warm. All right, on to the next big thing that helps keep the inside of your vehicle warm while you're sleeping in it in sub-zero temperatures. And I'm looking at it right now. It's the window coverings themselves, guys. These are made of foam. There's about an eighth of an inch of foam inside these coverings. So that is an insulating layer. I say that that's important because your windows, windows are, they got a bad reputation for not having any insulating qualities whatsoever. Cold air will seep in through windows. It's gonna come in through your glass. Glass just isn't a good insulator. So get something over your glass. I use these, you guys know I use these for stealth. Uh, they're my, just my black heat shields. Gold on one side, black on the other. I can link those below, I will do so. Uh, I didn't buy these for winter insulation, but they happen to work really well. Uh, I've seen other people who will make something even a bit thicker custom with like some foam and then like they'll they'll cut it to shape you can get a template you can push cardboard up against this 
and really push it and make the whole shape of your window with the cardboard and then cut out around that shape, that mold that you've kind of made with your fingers and that'll make you a window template, right? And then you can cut some foam to fit into your windows. But foam's a little bulky for me. Like I said, I have other techniques that I use to keep warm inside my car, which we're going over right now. So I find these heat shields are just fine. Uh, they actually do keep in quite a bit of warmth. I'm, I'm very happy with them, especially when the uh, reflective side is pointing inward. Uh, okay, so that is tip number two. Get yourself some good window insulation, guys. Or tip three, actually, because the beanie was number two. Okay, so on to the big one. Uh, that people have been asking me about, do I have a heat source? Yeah, I, I do actually. So what I do is, let's actually put this back up. This is the vehicle in just regular old camper mode, okay? Got the uh, driver's seat pushed forward, got the shelf deployed, I've got my seat here. This thing also reclines, by the way, guys. Pretty cool, I don't know if you knew that. Um, got the bed set up, ready to go. Shelf's looking good, everything's dandy. Jackery's up there, I got my drawers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, I'm gonna shed some light on this for you guys. There we go. Drawers. And I got some free space back here. See that? Now, when I'm camping in the winter, this is what I'll do. I will throw my cooler up in the front seat. Usually my cooler lives back here behind my seat here, but in winter, it goes up in the front, and here's why. Okay, so what I do is I collapse my seat when I'm getting ready for bed, and then I reach back here and I just collapse it even more. Just pull that cord, the whole seat comes up and goes like so. Okay, I'll usually do that from inside the vehicle, but I'm just kind of showing you what's what right now. So right here is what's crucial. I need some floor space for my heater, right? I need about 25 to 30 inches above the heater, which I'm gonna have once I put the heater on the floor. I need six inches on each side, and I need 18 inches in front, and I need zero inches behind it. So we're gonna grab this little guy, like a so. And we're gonna put him right there. Just like that. So that's where my little buddy will live. Okay? Now, this thing is really, really cool. I will turn it on for you right now. You'll see it kind of heat up. But before I do so, I'm gonna to wanna to move that cord out of the way. Anything that's kind of dangling in the way there that could be uh, an issue, just go ahead and get rid of anything like that, right? Okay, that's put away. All right, now I'm gonna reach over here. I'm gonna turn this off. All you do to turn this on is you push the pilot. You push it until it lights. See that little pilot light right there? Now I'm holding down, once that lights, hold this down for at least 30 seconds, okay? So we're just gonna count 30 here. I'll cut away and come back. Okay, so that's about 30 seconds. I'm still deploying it, or depressing it, I should say. And I'm gonna let that go right now, and that pilot light should stay lit, and you should see this filament fill up. There we go. There it is. Okay, so now it's lit. I will center that again. I'm comfortable with that. Got six inches on each side. I've got 30 inches above it or more. And I've got plenty of room at 30 inches again, probably right here. That's exactly what the box says I need, or the instructions. So, I'm golden. This is very important. This is a propane heater. Propane will naturally suck the oxygen out of whatever space it is burning in. 
All right, so for this to work and for you to be safe while you're in this car and the doors are closed and you're getting warm, you do need to crack a window, okay? You need to crack a window at least two inches or your sunroof or however you do it, okay? You need to have some ventilation. It doesn't have to be a ton but you do need to have ventilation. Please remember that. If you don't have ventilation, you could die of carbon monoxide poisoning. That's not good, all right? So that's a big, big disclaimer. Uh, use this at your own risk, all right, guys? Now, this heater, though, I should mention, it is rated as indoor safe, meaning it has an ox oxygen sensor on it. So if the oxygen inside my vehicle or inside whatever room or compartment you're using this heater in, if the oxygen reaches a level that is unsafe, that heater will automatically turn off. It also has a tip over sensor. So if I tip this over, it will automatically turn off. Here, I'll do it right now. Check this out. It's gonna turn off on its own. Boom, it's off. No flame, no heat, it is off, okay? And all you do is relight it. So it's a great heater. It comes with those two safety features. It has the low oxygen sensor and the tip off sensor. Okay. Uh, that's why I bought this heater. That's why I love it. It heats this thing up so, so fast. Now, another word to the wise, I don't sleep with the heater on. That's why I have a really, really warm sleeping bag. And that's why you know, I have other measures in place, like the window coverings, like the beanie. Um, if you were to sleep with that on, that close to the bed, I think you're just asking for it, you know? And also, with the oxygen thing and the carbon monoxide, I don't want to risk it. That being said, I do take one more measure, and it's right here. I've always had this in my vehicle. I think it's really important, whether you're cooking in your vehicle, or you're using a heater in your vehicle, a carbon monoxide alarm. Get yourself one of these. This was like 10 bucks on Amazon. I will link it below. I will also link the little buddy heater. And what else can I link? I think you can find your own beanies, guys, right? So <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I'm gonna put this guy back. It's just another look from the bed at the heater there. You can see it is cooking nicely. It is getting really toasty in here. I'll turn those lights on again. I just wanted to show you how red that filament actually gets. So we'll go ahead and clip those lights on. There we go. And you can see, all is well. Boy, I tell you what, this thing heats the inside of this CRV up so quickly. It is hot in here right now. So. In the cold weather, that thing really works uh, super well. But like I said, I won't sleep with it on. I will just uh, turn it on. If I happen to wake up and I'm really cold or something, I'll turn it on, I'll get the inside of my vehicle really toasty, uh, and then I'll turn it off again. You know, and I'll get in my sleeping bag. And I tend to be fine like that. Now, if you're in your vehicle and you're just hanging out and you're cooking in there and say it's a really cold day, go ahead and turn that thing on, you know? I can, uh, I can get in the front seat and I can prepare a sandwich for myself. I can do all, all the things I need to do while keeping the room uh, needed for this heater to be going back here, right? I could even lay down on the bed sideways, uh, snack out, whatever, hang out in here, watch a movie with the heater going. And in that case, I would again, just crack a window. That thing puts out so much heat, you're not gonna be cold in here even with a window cracked. And the window cracking is for your safety. So remember, it's essential. You can put one of the screens like I have on and keep your window cracked that way. You, you, it's just as good. Whatever you wanna do, okay? Just crack a window, make sure you have ventilation when you're running this bad boy. But boy, does it work. All right, guys, I think that's it. Now there is one last little thing that I do to keep myself warm when I'm living and camping in my Honda CRV in the winter. And it's really simple. Here it is. I'm gonna reach behind this bad boy and pull this out. This is like a few bucks, you guys. And it is a trusty old hot water bottle. So if you want, before bed, just boil yourself some water. Fill this up with your hot water, with your boiled water. Screw the cap on nice and tight. 
and throw that inside your sleeping bag with you. Put it down by your feet, put it by your hips, whatever. Cuddle it, whatever you want to do, it's going to keep you nice and warm. Those things work like a charm. Sometimes with that and the sleeping bag and the beanie, I don't even need the heater. Don't even touch it. The heater is honestly just like my extra measure and that's, that's why I have it. That's about it you guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, the information. Just keep in mind, always crack the window if you're using a propane heater inside your vehicle. And obviously, I didn't mention this before, but obviously don't drive or move the vehicle while you have it lit, okay? It is only for camper mode when the vehicle is parked and in one position, not moving or rolling anywhere anyway whatsoever. Uh, thanks again, you guys. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the cold weather tips, and there's more coming at you real soon. All right, adios.